All right, guys, we're back again. It is Carlton here, Color Boss Custom Auto Body Shop. And as you can see, I'm back fooling around with this front bumper valence, the lower valence from the 1990, 90, uh, the, the 1991 Toyota truck restoration project. I just want you guys to know that I do speak well, I speak clearly, and I am educated. But for some reason, when I'm trying to hold this phone and talk at the same time, I forget words, I call things the wrong names, and I just lose my mind. So, uh, anyway, back to the topic. Or as they say, that being said, it annoys me when people say that. That's the new catchphrase. <laughs> this is that same valence that I painted, and I gave you all the reports on what I thought was a great product. Uh, the Krylon. The Krylon Color Max. It has the Paint Plus Primer. And we talked about how it had the good spray tip. Let me take this cap off. I'm going to tell you guys why... <laughs> body shop people can't leave good alone when you're a body shop professional it's just not certain things are going to get under your skin and get on your nerves now that is a good cap because it's different than the cap that you see that is small on like this product that has the small cap this is worse so i have to use that paint can gun attachment with the small cap but this one has the seemingly better cap but there's something else missing from this there is no fan control where you can rotate it to get a fan to come out because when this paint shoots it shoots in a circle motion it doesn't flatten and make a fan like it would when you're using a paint gun so because of that i saw tiger stripes in this part and also another thing that annoyed me that I could not get over as a paint and body professional, this stuff just did not set up right. It feels tacky and it's been two days and that's because there's no hardener used. Now, I don't use hardener all the time with base coat. Of course I use hardener or activator with clear coat. That's the stuff that makes a new chemical bond that makes it really hard and it makes it last a lot longer. So what I am going to do, I just wet sanded this thing because there was a bunch of little uh, patches and splotches where the can started spitting, bad can, and then I had to go and wet sand it with this 1500 grit film from 3M. It comes in a box. Let me show you what the box looks like. This stuff is not cheap. And this is what I use. Um, body shops will use products like this. You can get sandpaper a lot cheaper, but this is what the box looks like. It is from 3M, and it's really nifty. Watch this. Whenever you open the box, you can operate it like a little drawer. So there you have it. Isn't that fabulous? Would you look at that? So then these sheets are stuck together, and you basically rip one apart, and then you use that with a sanding block that has the Velcro on it to keep it from coming up. Or you can use it by hand when you are wet sanding on a surface that is irregular. So I've got the, it looks dirty now because it's got black paint in it. I usually use a sprayer, but when wet sanding, you keep your paper wet. You keep a sprayer there. <laughs> it's wobbling around now that I'm using one hand. And you basically sand until you see some of the colors start to come out of the drips. And you want to be careful not to go too far. But with a fine grit sandpaper like 1500, you can take out the splotches and the minor imperfections or orange peel without going all the way through that paint. So I have wet sanded it. What I'm going to do next is dry it up, prep it, and I'm going to shoot the UPAL 2882 clear and see what happens and see what the clear coat will look like over this cheap rattle can paint. And I'm probably gonna tell you, to be honest, I think this is the last time I use a rattle can. Now this might be good for the amateur. And if you can leave good enough alone, this probably would have been fine for 90% of people. But since I do stuff like this and like that, I'm super picky and I can't leave it alone. So rattle can, I'm done with you. That's the last time I do that. I would rather take the time to shoot the good paint because when you buy the good stuff from the Auto Body Supply Store, like this, Nason Paint Full Base, 
full uh, base that goes with a clear coat. This stuff sprays a lot better. And then when you spray it with an HVLP gun, it's gonna come out with that fan pattern, flat and wide, so you get a better, more even application of paint. So I am going to pull out the Supernova and we are going to mix up some Upal 2882 which is what I will use on the small stuff like this, little projects like this. And we'll see what it looks like after we get some clear coat on it. All right, let's mix it. Up. Okay, I'm gonna mix this four to one. And I use this small little one fourth um, size cup when I'm mixing. This is the easy way to mix a proper ratio. When you're not wanting to use the mixing cup, you can just pour four into here and then one of the hardener, or you can use this. And the way this works is you would go to the line that says four to one. So we come on around and this is the one that says four to one. And we would pour four parts up to the line that says one, two, three, four. And then we go to the next four here because that's one part and it does four to one automatically. So let's try that if we just take this little cup here and we put in the first one and we see on the four to one it comes up to the one so then all I have to do is pour this until we get up to the four there we go that's good and then we'll come on in here and take our hardener or activator there we go the 2323 standard hardener and we're gonna pour it up to the next line that says four that is right here in the four to one section. And so there you have it. A little bit more, okay. So that's four to one. And then we will take our handy dandy mixing stick, mix this down, throw that in the gun, strain it out. And we are using the 3M. I use the 3M PPS cup system and it just locks in right here into the top of the gun. There's a liner in there. So then you can just throw the liner away when you're done. I usually recycle them though, cause I'm too cheap. And then we'll shoot this clear and see how it looks. There we go. All right, we are ready to go. The paint is mixed, fan is on, and we are going to apply our clear coat. So let's have at it. Coat number one, and we'll have one more coat, and there we have it. All right, we are all done, and it looks fantastic, so you think. But now I'm going to tell you the part that body shop people normally don't talk about, and that's when you mess up. Guess what I did? I messed up big time. You see those big drips, big blotches there? Well, I got halfway through painting this piece, and the gun started dripping out clear coat and then spewing splotches right out of the nozzle. And that's what it ended up looking like. So I get to wet sand this and shoot it again. And I'll tell you why that happened. It's because it's a lazy Sunday afternoon and there is this one itty bitty little part here. This is the flow nozzle that I had put into the gun and I did not tighten the cone in. I tightened it by hand and forgot to put the wrench on it. Oh. So air was escaping back up through the gun and pressurizing the paint cup and then blowing that clear coat through the seal. So that's what happened. So we're gonna call it a day for now. Overall, I think it's gonna look okay once I fix up this boo-boo, but that's what happens. Sometimes you mess up. And you have to own up to it and say, hey, take your time, take a deep breath, and don't forget the small little steps, or these are the types of things that can happen. So hopefully we'll have another update on this, but I still uh, have the same conclusion. No more rattle can paint for me. Let's just keep it real. I'm going to use the professional automotive stuff from here on out. But hopefully you did learn something from this video. That is all I've got for today. And until next time, we'll see you back here in Colorball's Custom Auto Body Shop where we just shoot it. <laughs>